In this building right now, we have some of the rarest, most valuable phones in existence. Can we create a Mr. Who's the Boss intro like that in CapCut? Dude, we can get really close. First, we need all of our elements. It looks like Arun Mr. Who's the Boss actually filmed on a set that looks like this and had the effects added after in, oddly enough, After Effects. But I don't have a big warehouse and we're not gonna use After Effects to cut all this stuff out so we can add fire afterwards. So we're gonna make all of our elements CapCut friendly. First, I used artificial intelligence to create this warehouse background. Then I filmed myself with these boxes in front of me on a green screen and then I left the screen and filmed just this by itself and you'll see why in a second. To start, let's go ahead and drag this wall, this warehouse wall, onto our timeline and notice that it moved everything over for us. I'm going to leave this here so we can reference it as needed. I'm going to turn its volume down so we don't have to listen to it when I'm playing it. I'm just going to click on audio and drag the volume slider all the way down. Background's about the right length. I want to make it a little longer, maybe about six seconds. And then I'm going to drag me on top of it. And then I'm going to just cut it right when the background is just the green screen and not me, starting right here. So I'm just going to click on it and hit Command B on a Mac, Control B on a PC, and drag this on top of it so we can manipulate these independently. The first thing you might notice is that there are black bars here. That's because Arun's video, the one I pulled from YouTube, is at a slightly different aspect ratio than 16 by 9, which is what I shot at. So we're just going to go down here to ratio and select 16 by 9 and bam, now it fills the whole frame. Now I'm gonna trim all of these clips so that they are all the same duration. I'm gonna hit Command B for both of those, Control B on a PC, then hit Delete. And now we're just gonna manipulate these layers one at a time. And this is actually pretty simple. Even though it looked pretty fancy, it's easier than the last two videos that I've created for you on this channel. I'm gonna hide these two layers and first start with this warehouse background. Now, it's cool, we could use it just like that, but there are two issues. Number one, it's kind of wider than we want it to be. So I'm going to zoom in on it and move it a little bit. So it just kind of maybe looks a little bit cooler. I think the background looks pretty good like that. You guys can do whatever you want with it. I've included this background and all of the elements that I'm using in this video in a link in the description. So you can go down there right now and click on that link and download the elements and then follow along with me. This background is really sharp, but it's supposed to be in the background and to separate the the background from the person that's talking. It's going to be me in this case. We want the background to be a little bit blurry. To do that, you can add some blur to it and one effect that CapCut has built in. It's actually a pro effect, but it is called lens blur. So we're just going to go ahead and go to effects. I have saved it as a favorite so I can find it. You can search for effects now, which is a recent addition, which is huge, but it doesn't always work. So you just want to save it as a favorite by hitting that star and then it'll appear here at the top. I'm just going to click and drag it down to the timeline. And this is a, a pretty, pretty good filter because it does have the ability to control it. We want to turn the speed all the way down to zero so that it doesn't change over the course of time here. And we want to blur it considerably less than that. So we can still tell that it's kind of a cool warehouse and filters kind of adjust the color. I kind of like it warmer like that. And the range does that to it. And I like the windows a little bit darker. So we drag the range all the way, now, probably all the way down to the left. I think that looks best for our purposes. We don't want the background to pop. We want it to be a background. Now let's turn on the next layer, which is me talking. So I'm gonna hit this little eyeball right here and play it. I want you to listen. In this building right now, we have some of the rarest, most valuable boxes in existence. Is that the worst English accent you've ever heard in your life? What I do want you to notice actually is this hum. Listen carefully. Can you hear that? That is because I'm using a wireless microphone and the receiver for the microphone, if it's too close to the camera, like on the camera or just hanging right underneath it, it goes The wireless interface messes up the camera sound. What I have to do, I learned on my own, is hang it like three feet below the camera, but I didn't do that. So we've got that, that whine there. How do we get rid of that? Well. CapCut makes it easy. In fact, it's easier in CapCut than it is in Adobe Premiere Pro. I mean, it, it sounds actually better. We just click on this video that has the audio attached to it, click on audio, and scroll down to loudness normalization. Watch what happens. See, all of these levels came up. That makes the levels all the same, kind of even. It normalizes it, and it makes it, makes it sound better and louder. Watch, watch the levels again. I'm going to turn off this normalization. They go down, then they go back up. Now I want you to listen to this hum at the end now. Listen carefully. Did you hear that? Hear a little bit here? Some of the rarest, most valuable boxes in existence. Yeah, that's, that's really annoying, right? But we can fix it. Now, if you don't have the pro version, you can do noise reduction, and that helps some. Just a little bit, but not much. 
I'm gonna be using a couple pro features in this video. There's workarounds if you don't wanna use the pro features, but it's kind of fun to play with them and see how well they work and it might be something you wanna invest in. Then I'm gonna scroll down here to vocal isolation. That is a pro feature. I can either keep the vocals or remove the vocals. This is actually super cool. It's something that you cannot do in Adobe Premiere. I can keep just the vocals and have music drop out. For example, if I have a popular song and I've got Taylor Swift singing and I wanna hear just Taylor Swift and not the music, I can get rid of the music or reverse. I can get rid of Taylor Swift's vocals and keep the music and then I can sing the Taylor Swift part. So that's actually really cool. If you're into that, that's one reason to get this uh, pro version. But vocal isolation, keep vocal. And by the way, I don't get any commission if you get the pro version. I don't care. It's just, it's just fun stuff that I actually like. Now let's listen to it with vocal isolation here, getting rid of the noise. In this building right now, we have some of the rarest, most valuable boxes in existence. Hear that? No more buzz. Pretty amazing. Next, we want to get rid of me. Now I'm on a green screen, so I could put a mask around this part and then I could key out the green using the chroma key, but this actually works better. The green screen removal, which is this thing right here, cut out chroma key, is only fair, it has minimal adjustments. Plus this green screen is not lit perfectly evenly. It should be even all the way around, but I've got these lights really close and it's kind of hotter here and darker here and darker here. So we're gonna see how we can do with the green screen, just so you can see how it works. And then I'm gonna do it a different way. So I'm going to hit the color picker right here and choose some of this darker green down here. And then I'm gonna turn the strength up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And you know, it's not bad, but if you zoom in on it, you can still see green and it's kind of uneven around me. And then I would have to mask this stuff out separately. So I'm just kind of eh for that. But it's probably gonna look better if we do something different and make sure this is highlighted. I'm gonna turn off the chroma key, just go right in the middle somewhere here. And I'm going to click on it and scroll down to auto cutout. Notice that only human figures can be cut out and it does an okay job at that. I'm gonna click it and bam, it's got me cut out and these boxes are all kind of, it's not really sure. But if I scroll through it, I'm pretty consistent and the boxes aren't gonna matter because I have this layer right above me. So let's go ahead and click on that guy, unhide it and oh no, what do we do? We gotta make these boxes go away. Now we are gonna use the chroma key. So I'm going to click on chroma key, select the color picker, choose one of these darker colors near the edge of the box right here. And then I'm just gonna start turning it up until enough of it goes away for it to be usable. Look, there I am. And there, that's pretty good. We have a little bit of green left here, but that's okay, it shouldn't be too distracting. And we see that the green kind of bled through here, but we're going to fix that as well. The other thing we're gonna do is get rid of these guys, this side here, because there was no green there. And this is something you should know. If you're shooting a green screen and say, oh no, the green screen's not wide enough, it, it doesn't have to be. If you're gonna add a background behind it, we can cut this stuff out a different way. How do we do that? We click on mask and we select rectangle. And then I just scale it up until I get just what I need. And right about here is okay. We gotta move the whole thing over a little bit and then bam. And we're gonna clean up this a little bit later by, by blowing it up and hiding it. And now, you know, this, this isn't too bad. It kind of looks like I'm there on the set, right? And you see this right here, this line right there, if you zoom in a little bit, um, we can make that go away. That just means I need to move the mask over a tiny bit more. And to get back to the mask, I just click on the clip and make sure mask is highlighted here. And then I can just drag this over a tiny bit more and get rid of that line. And that's gonna be okay because we're gonna blow stuff up. And now it looks, looks dang good, right? If you learned something already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and maybe go ahead and leave me a comment. I sit in this dark cave all day and you guys are pretty much the only friends I interact with. So, you know, say hi down there. And I, I try to usually say hi back. I want you to notice that as I scroll back and forth here that the boxes aren't glitching in and out like they were on that other layer because we have boxes on top of them. And, and in case you're wondering what this layer consists of, I'm gonna turn it on and turn off this one and you can see that it is just the boxes on the desk. Okay, next we wanna add fire to the boxes. The reason we cut out these boxes is to add fire to them. And I couldn't find an exact effect that has fire and this is another pro feature that's gonna work pretty well for us. It's called laser beam. I'm gonna drag it to just this layer with the boxes, not the layer with me, just with the boxes. And I drag it on there and look at that, it's already looking pretty cool. And it's kind of yellow and maybe moving how we don't want it. So I'm gonna adjust the color until it gets to something orange that looks a little more fiery, you know, something like that. Turn up the strength, it's a little more obnoxious. Um, the range, we don't want it to be too crazy. And the speed, let's see what we want. Turn it all the way up, see what it looks like. Pretty nuts, let's turn it way down. Nope. Nope. Yeah, somewhere in there is gonna look good. And it's like, you know, it's not fire, but it looks, I think it looks, looks pretty dang cool, right? 
Now, one thing I notice is that because this filter is meant to go around edges, it sees these lines, the edge of the mask as edges. So it's adding that effect to them. And we don't really want it there. It doesn't look right. So to kind of help fix that, I'm going to click on that, jump over to the masks and just bring the mask in kind of quite a bit. And you see the table starts to vanish and stuff. But we're just going to add a little bit of feather to that just so it kind of smooths it out and doesn't look like it doesn't belong there. So you just kind of mess with this until it looks, it's going to take some of the color out of that, but I think that's going to look better overall, a little more natural. So we just look for those lines to go away. And if I click off, you know, that looks, that looks pretty darn good, I think. And the next thing we want to do is select all of these guys, right click and select create compound clip. We're going to nest them together so we can modify them all together. I'm going to start by zooming in a little bit to get rid of the bottom of this desk where things started to go, go wonky on us. I'm going to scale up quite a bit to there. And that's going to help hide that other issue as well. Put me like right in dead center there. And bam, now that looks, that looks pretty darn good. We're starting right there. Now, the next thing is a really great hack. If you want to exactly match what another creator has done, and I don't suggest you completely copy creators, but it's really good practice. We're going to take this clip we have of Arun, Mr. Who's the Boss, and drop it right on top of ours. Now, because... I was speaking a little more slowly. It doesn't line up exactly with his, but we can just look right here and go, okay, he starts talking about there. I start talking about there. So let's go ahead and see what he does. He whooshes his way in and then he starts to fade out. So I'm going to set a keyframe here at the beginning and we're going to change the properties scale and position using keyframes. So remember a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. I'm going to set one for scale and position. The two properties were changing. And then I'm going to try to just match what Arun does. And like right here, he's starting to zoom out. So we're going to just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to change scale and zoom out a little right here. Bam. And to see exactly what he does, I'm going to click on Arun's clip, Mr. Who's the Boss, and go down to opacity and drag it down. It's like, oh, look at that. Our faces are lined up perfectly. Now I can just track what he does without having to count frames or anything. I'm going to make sure I have my clip highlighted. I'm going to scroll forward until there's another stop for a rune there in the background. It looks like he landed right about there, got a little smaller, moved down a little bit. So making sure that my clip is highlighted, I'm going to change one of these properties and it will automatically add a keyframe. So I'm going to scale down just a little bit and bring me down just a little bit like that. And notice that it automatically added a keyframe. So, so far we've got, I'm scaling down and now he's moving that way and he lands right about there. So I'm just going to scale me up again Scale, watch, it'll add a keyframe for me. Oh, what, it added a keyframe, it added a keyframe, wow. And then just move me over Arun's face. And now I'm going to go forward a little bit more and he lands right about there. And he got even bigger, so I'm gonna scale me up and make me position right over his face. And then I'm gonna to go to this next stop here where I think he lands right about there, right? He lands right there. So we scaled up a lot. So I'm gonna scale way up and position my face over his. And that will leave us with something like this. Let's go ahead and delete Mr. Who's the Boss and see how it looks for just us. In this building right now, we have some of the rarest, most valuable boxes in existence. That's okay, but it's really harsh. It's very linear, the movement, and we want it to be more smooth. So what I wanna do is just smooth these guys out by adding a curve. And I just right click on this clip and I choose show keyframe animation. And then I add the built-in curve, the default curve for all of these. I'll do it for one and then you can just do the rest on your own. So we're on scale right now. I'm gonna double click on scale and this graph pops up. And then I'm gonna to navigate to each of these dots by, I can either click on them. Once they turn blue, I can add this default curve. Now there are other curve options available, a little more complicated. We're not gonna mess with those today. We'll just use the default one. It works pretty great. So I can click on them and select that default curve like that. And, or I can use this left arrow. And once this thing is blue, I can add the curve. And for this guy, I'll just click on it. And for this first one, because it's at frame one, it's almost impossible to click on. You have to use this arrow to get to it. And now I can click on it and add that curve. I'm gonna do the same thing for the X and Y axis. And you can watch over the course of one second. Okay, now I'm just going to right click on this to close all of those, hide keyframe animation. And we can have a look, look at it here. In this building right now, we have some of the rarest, most valuable boxes in existence. So that's, that's kind of fun, right? The only thing that I don't like, I'd like my head a little bit higher so we can see more of the boxes. So I'm just gonna position my playhead right over this keyframe here and just scale me up a little more and then move my head up a tiny bit like that. And, and then I think that 
will be pretty great. And notice how much smoother that was by adding those curves. Next, we want to do that transition that Arun has in the beginning of his. Notice that it goes whoosh, and that's a, you know, a horizontal motion blur right there. We don't really have exactly that. You can't really keyframe that here. The motion blur in CapCut is, you know, questionable right now, but there is something we can do that's kind of easier and maybe even better. We're just gonna click on the clip, select animation, make sure in is selected, and we can use any of these to bring that in. We can use Turbulence 3, we can use Split Slide. These are all, you know, valid ways to bring that in. I mean, that's pretty cool. The one I kind of like is Turbulence 2, which is pretty similar to what he does. The only issue is that was too long. So I'm going to make that instead of 1.7 seconds, I'm gonna make it 0.3 seconds, which is about how long Arun's was. And it looks like that. Maybe a little longer because of that nature of that filter. 0.4 seconds, that looks pretty great. So now we've got something that is really close to Arun's video, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of music and sound effects and we'll get our finished masterpiece now. In this building right now, we have some of the rarest, most valuable boxes in existence. There has never been a better time to grow on YouTube, but there are two things holding you back right now if you're not seeing the growth you want. The first one is that you haven't mastered editing yet. And the other one is that you are completely skipping the things that actually get you views and subscribers and you're not even aware. I can solve both of your problems and help you literally skip almost 20 years of trial and error with my new course, Master CapCut. In my course, I teach you everything you need to know about CapCut, getting you on the path to becoming an editing wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Imagine being able to figure out on your own what I shared with you in this video. Secondly, in section two of my course, I teach you how I went from this this is day one when I started this YouTube channel, April 21, 2018, one view on my video. I went from that and about 200 videos later, I started doing this. And this is only a few months ago, so I am new. If you're new, like I just started implementing the things I teach you in section two. And I literally went from getting, you know, a few thousand views a day with 200 videos on my channel. And now I'm getting 5,000, 4,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12, 18,000 views every single day on my channel. And my subscribers, same thing happened. Remember the beginning right here? Months and months, for actually for years I was getting nothing. Then I started implementing the things I teach you in section two of my course, and bam, now I'm getting hundreds of subscribers every day. And this is live stuff. I'm not, I've got nothing to hide from you. Here is the last 28 days where you get a better take on it, where I'm getting 286, 367, 315, it just keeps going up and up because of the things I teach you in section two of my course. I guarantee you can do exactly the same thing or you get all your money back, no questions asked. If you want results like I'm getting right now on YouTube, please go to mastercapcut.com or click on the link in the description below right now. Since you're still watching this video, I'm guessing you are above average. So the odds of you blowing up on YouTube are probably quite high. As you probably know, you need a thousand subscribers to get monetized on YouTube. So this is the perfect opportunity for you to make more money from YouTube and set yourself up to become a full-time YouTuber. Doesn't matter what your background or niche is, what I share with you works in every niche faster than anything I've ever seen. If you don't get results, you get your money back, no questions asked. I can't wait to see you crush YouTube and make your goals of YouTube success come true. So please go to the link in the description below or click right here and sign up right now. You quite literally have absolutely nothing to lose. You will become an editing wizard and your channel will grow or you get your money back. If that doesn't interest you, please watch this video because YouTube knows that's what you're looking for.